This is going to be my much anticipated first light and first impressions video for the new Ascar ACL 200 lens. So if you haven't seen my previous video about why I bought this lens and a quick overview about it, I'll link that up here for you to take a look at. So it's been about two months since I bought this lens now, which is hard to believe given how little I've used it. Naturally, I bought a new piece of gear, so the weather has just been absolutely horrific. <laughs> uh, naturally, as you'd expect. I have managed to get out a couple times in the last couple weeks. Um, I've had about one and a half clear nights uh, and between some intermittent clouds, dealing with the moon a little bit, and also just some boneheaded mistakes on my part. I guess that happens, you've got a bit of rust when you haven't been out for so long due to the weather. I haven't been able to take any super long exposure photos with it yet, uh, so everything that you're going to see is, is fairly short overall integration time, uh, and everything just on the Star Adventure, nothing with auto-guiding, not on the HEQ5, so... Uh, it's all going to be pretty top line stuff. So yeah, this is really just going to be a, like a first impressions and how I feel about the purchase uh, after having made it. Uh, and is it worth the price tag? And, you know, uh, you know, how do I feel about departing with my dearly spent money uh, just on the performance of the lens so far? Now I know I brought it up in the previous video, but I just want to highlight it again. This thumb screw here that allows you to rotate the collar 360 degrees, I've used obviously every single time, and it is just such a fantastic feature that, uh, I, you know, I wish every other lens uh, slash camera, but especially lens, had. So without any further ado guys, let's head over to the laptop and have a look at some of the images that I've been taking, and I'll run you through my thoughts. Uh, so this is going to be the first image uh, that I've that I took. So this is just a single frame of Comet Leonard uh, and this is one of those nights that I was talking about where the clouds came in. I got about five of these shots before these clouds you can see just came in and ruined everything. Um, but this is pretty good. So a single shot uh, of about 20 seconds I believe. Um, it's a nice detail in the tail. Uh, but the main thing I want to show you about this single shot is just how flat the field is. So we'll go right to the edge here and we're still getting these beautiful pinpoint stars um, just on the, the Star Adventure as well so we're not even auto guiding or anything but the main point is uh, the flatness of the field which was the the absolute most important thing that I wanted to test with this so uh, very happy with that and pretty good detail for a single frame so I managed to get out a couple nights later uh, to actually stack a few images when the weather was a bit better unfortunately the tail had uh, really disappeared quite a bit in that time and just being low on the horizon with a bit of light pollution out there I wasn't able to really get much of anything here it's a nice little bit of the nucleus and, and just the immediate part of the tail is all right um, but again you can see these beautiful pin sharp stars um, so the the lens is doing everything it needs to uh, and same thing all the way to the edge in a stacked image this time absolutely no curvature really. Um, I'm gonna look at this beautiful big star right here in the corner that's lovely. So really really happy with all of that. So just a couple on the comet there. So then I've got um, I'll show you this one here which is one of the main images that I was really excited to take with this lens because it it frames these two objects up so nicely obviously the the horse head and surrounds and then the Orion Nebula and its surrounds so um, I've cropped in just the tiniest bit on this picture just to fix up some stacking errors that you tend to get from Deep Sky Stacker um, but you can see this is uh, I was talking about I had some boneheaded mistakes so I thought ah, oh, it's it's hot it was about 25 degrees that night I won't need my dew heater uh, and I'll just let it run. I had this set up for about a four hour imaging run and of course after about half an hour everything completely dewed over and again another boneheaded mistake I didn't even think to check. 
Uh, so when I went to look at all the images the next day, I noticed that, yeah, like I said, after about half an hour of imaging, it was just useless, um, very blurry from, from all the dew. So that's a real shame. But uh, the good news is that this is half an hour worth of images stacked right here, uh, just from a bottle for no filters or anything. Um, so even in half an hour, because we're at F4, uh, we're starting to get some of this surrounding gas and dust uh, around um, the Orion Nebula, which is very exciting from just half an hour. Uh, even a little bit of the reflection nebula here uh, next to the second star in Orion's belt, very faintly you can kind of start to make it out. And that's, I was not expecting that at all. There's a lot more detail uh, that can be brought out. You can see a little bit more reflection nebulosity there, um, so a little bit of detail in the gas here. Um, and even with the stock camera, we can start to see a bit more of the red uh, emission region above the horse head here, which obviously extends all the way up here. Uh, and you can just very faintly see the, the outline of that, which kind of runs like here. Uh, so look, for half an hour, um, very, very impressed with that, and I'll just have to wait for some better, better weather to do that, you know, a full night of imaging on this on this region, and I'm sure it'll look amazing. Uh, again, obviously the, sharp, the stars are really nice and sharp all the way to the edge, so nice and flat. Uh, so the one, the one issue that I have seen is, are these halos uh, around the large star. So you get them on the, the two on attack here, and then I forget this one's name, but the next one in the belt has it even more prominently, I'd say, and then even this guy right here has a little bit of, and you'll notice that they kind of tend to point slightly towards the nearest corner. You can see that one, the star sits in the bottom right, kind of towards the center, and here it's just above the center. So these halos obviously tend to point uh, kind of away uh, and to the side, uh, well, up, up towards the nearest corner, I should say. Um, so I don't know exactly what that's about. I have seen that with lots of other reflectors as well. I'm not super worried about it. I'm not super excited about that. Hopefully, um, I don't have that issue going forward too much. These are very bright stars and they don't come up too often, I would say. Uh, I don't have any other images so far that have this issue. Um, so I don't know if anyone knows, uh, what's going on with that, or if there's a way to remedy that, uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, it's really the one thing that I was a little bit, oh, that's a bit of a shame about. Um, I believe in Pix Insight there's a way to deal with that from my research, but I, I do all my stuff in Photoshop. So at this stage, I don't know of a way to fix that in post-processing either. Um, but anyway, yeah, let me know if you know something about that that I don't. Uh, otherwise, half an hour of imaging, very, very happy with this image. Uh, good star color and everything as well. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, good. And I should mention these are 30 second images, it's about half an hour of 30 second images. So about 60 images that I stacked. Um, and I guess the other thing I should say is that with these 30 second images, I kept, uh, what I keep about 85% of them. And I probably could have kept more to be honest. I just always like to err on the, um, or on the safe side and get take the best data. So at 30 seconds, just on the Star Adventurer unguided, um, this works super, super well. And I did 30 seconds because it's so hot at the moment that going for too long, you just get so much uh, noise and, and hot pixels. I did take dark frames as well to deal with that, but just wanted to keep things to a minimum. Did mean that my histogram was quite far over to the left as well. So I will say this is not the world's best data. Uh, which makes it all the more impressive, really. I would uh, be very excited to take this on a cooler night <laughs> with my dew heater um, and just a bit more optimized settings with longer longer integration times and all that. So anyway, that's that guy there. Uh, I had a little bit cooler night um, uh, a few days later and I went after the small Magellanic cloud here. So this is about an hour, just over an hour of of data, and these are 90 second images this time. So uh, you can see uh, pretty good, uh, good nebulosity inside the small Magellanic cloud, getting you know all these nebulas which are coming out green because I've got a stock DSLR and all that red's just getting totally uh, outshone, I guess, in a way. Uh, yeah, the oxygen's just taking over. 
a little bit more up here. So you can see, I again have taken dark frames here, but because we're at 90 seconds, and even though it was a cooler night, there's a lot of this red noise. Um, just pretty gross. Uh, so I don't put that down to the lens, I put that down to it just being warm, you know, well over 20 degrees and no cooling in the camera. And then the fact that this is a 90 second, uh, these are 90 second images versus over here, these are 30 second images. So you can see this is why I went to those 30 second images. There's a tiny bit of that noise, but nowhere near what you got in the 90 second images that you can see. So uh, the joys of taking photos in the Australian summer, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, again, uh, really nicely frames up the small Magellanic cloud, obviously with a bit of nebulosity. There's another one up here, which I just had to cut off, unfortunately, again, due to some stacking errors. Um, but you get uh, the 47 Tucane in there, which uh, for those in the Northern Hemisphere that may not know is the best and brightest uh, globular cluster in the night sky, actually, only visible from the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, and even that uh, has come out at 200 millimeters. Can't complain with that resolution. It's never going to be that great, especially because I'm going to be super undersampled at, uh, with my camera and a 200 millimeter lens. There's not much you can do about that. So you're always going to get this kind of blockiness in the stars, but that's not bad. Uh, I'll take that for how zoomed out that is. Uh, it just makes for a bit of interest in the image. And uh, I didn't actually look into what this uh, galaxy is, but there's a tiny little galaxy out here, just uh, out to the right. Uh, a little bit blurry there, but um, that was pretty cool to see that we even picked up this distant faint galaxy as well. So with these 90 second images, I only kept about 60% of them uh, unguided on the Star Adventurer. So yeah, you're, you are gonna sacrifice uh, some of your stills because it is you know, a fairly heavy setup for the Star Adventurer. Again, I am very, very picky with what I keep. So if you were a bit less picky than me, you could probably keep more than 60%. But uh, yeah, like I said, I like to keep the best data only. Uh, so that was uh, another potential issue if you're going to put this on a Star Adventurer, it is definitely pushing the weight limit, so just bear that in mind uh, that you will have to throw out a, probably a decent chunk of your data. Alrighty guys, so that's it for the images that I've taken so far. Like I said, it's only been a couple nights in the last couple months due to horrible weather, and even when it has been clear it's been very hot, so just dealing with that as well. Uh, but as you can see, uh, super super flat fields, so that's the, the main thing and uh, I really can't complain so far. I'm really excited to see how it does in some cooler weather with some longer exposures and also with some auto guiding as well. But I am very confident and so far feeling really, really good about this lens. Other than that halo issue, which may or may not even be its fault. And uh, hopefully you guys can let me know what the deal is with that. So that's it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving a like and subscribe to help me out. Uh, and also, if you are thinking of making any purchases in the foreseeable future, I've got some links down below. Uh, if you'd like to use any of those, you can help out the channel as well. Thank you very much, and until next time, I'll see you later.